these guys. The, the, this is the best. This yeah. is the best crowd. Some guy was right. putting this place down. No, yeah, yeah, I know. What is going on? He obviously has never been. Hey, listen, I, I got nothing, I got no stakes in this. I'm from San Francisco, but I stood up for you guys because I knew I, I knew this. Yeah. Oh, Frank was on the case. Superstar when they were going around, but just before they went to the Universal Amphitheater and stuff like that with Carl and with no. Ron Ellen. Um, here's a little bit of trivia. Ladies and gentlemen, here comes Mr. Bob Bingham. If anybody had told me 50 years ago I'd be standing and doing this here today, I would have asked them what they were smoking. <laughs> First big credits on Broadway in the program, Leper Litter Bearers. <laughs> and we were good at it. We picked up a lot of lepers every night. <laughs> and then fate took over and Ted, you know, performed the role and then he never looked back. He was, once he, once he was on that stage, he was JC. Yeah. So, um, if you're off uh, uh, the rock, the king of rock opera, but you know him and love him as JC, JC himself, Ted Neely. You know what we got here, Rhode Island? We got a Jesus Christ Superstar cast reunion. Because you wanted to see a grown man cry. <laughs> a couple. I, I have to kind of explain what I just said, because Obviously, I'm not really grown yet. But I'm working on it still. And that this is still happening. When the film was being made, before we made the film, Norman Jewison told us, I don't even know if we're going to get it distributed. Because it was protested on Broadway every single performance we did. And, uh, there was any violence, but there were people who were protesting the show. If we were just trying to walk on stage, or excuse me, walk into the theater to get on stage, it was almost impossible because there were so many people trying to keep us out, you know? And if I had a chance to, well, they told us, don't say anything to anyone because they might punch you right in the mouth. You know? <laughs> but fortunately, there was no violence at all. But if I ever had a chance when I was <laughs> and I wanted to say, were you there? <laughs> but I didn't say a word. Anyway, so the bottom line here is you guys proved this has been a miracle. And we are still here and doing it because you are the miracle who love it enough to pass it on to you. <laughs> you and Kurt known each other? How long have you guys known each well, other? Well, we met that, I think it's about 300 years ago. Right? <laughs> yeah, I don't like to admit that. But yeah, it was around that time. We both met for the first time because of the great Tom Horgan who decided that we should be in a show together. Yes, Tom gave me my first big break on Broadway and it gave many of us and uh, he was a visionary he had already directed Hair. That was a pretty good start for him. 
And he went on to do wonderful, wonderful other shows. But he, he opened the door for Broadway for rock and roll. Yeah, nobody had done rock and roll on Broadway before. He did. And then he opened the door for rock operas too. Same gentleman, Tom O'Brien. And we both. Did you first audition for Frank Cusaro, or did you first audition? No, you auditioned for Tom first. Yeah. And guess what I auditioned for? Yeah, you're right. Nobody. <laughs> No, I auditioned for Judas. I wanted to play Judas, and here's why. Because I love the character Judas. And also, who would want to play Jesus? The world knows who Jesus is, so everybody is a critic. So I thought, I'll play Judas, and I can create a character. You know? So when I did the audition, literally, I sang Heaven on Their Minds, and it was just Tom and two producers and the piano player. I sang Heaven on Their Minds, and he jumped out of the chair and ran up on the stage and gave me a big hug. And I'm thinking, I got the part, this is great, I got it. He said, do me a favor, Dave. Come back tomorrow and sing the other guy. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Well, I'll just tell you really quickly. Keep it G or PG, yeah, yeah. but is there some cool I stuff that happened? I can on keep it G-rated, because one of the things that happens in a movie is is usually things you've never thought that might happen. But when you have a great crew, they're always there ready to make sure that they can handle the unexpected. So you'll see tonight, uh, at the beginning of the, they chose to add, the, Norman said to Andrew and Tim, I need more time, the movie's not long enough, I need you to write another piece. Yeah. And, and I want it, I'd like it to have the priests in it so it explains the relationship and why Caiaphas and Annas came up with the idea of how they were going to get rid of this guy, right? Who was causing them all this trouble. And uh, we, 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 uh, well, we didn't know what we were going to do. So Norman, Norman guided all of us because none of us, uh, Barry Denon was the only person who had done a feature film. And Pontius Pilate. And Barry Pilate. Pontius Pilate. The late, the late great Barry Denner. Yes, it's here for Barry Denner. Shining after that, and but just before Superstar, he had been working with Norman on Fiddler. And he had just finished doing the soundtrack in London of the original record that he is also on. And he brought a cassette tape to Norman and said, Norman. I, I think this could be a movie, you know, and his, he had that great classically trained, almost English yes. accent of a classical actor's training out of Hollywood. And because of Barry, really, Norman had got the idea to actually make this movie, and he, he bought the rights up right away, before even Andrew and Tim ever thought to buy the movie rights, and that's why we're able to go out now and do what we do with, uh, and Andrew can't really Others. Okay. So here's the story. Right. Oh, they lost track. They lost track. It's okay. It's okay. It's, okay. it's, okay. it's Saturday so night. So when okay. you see, then we are decided. That's the number. We are just. It's only in the movie. It's never been in one of the Broadway shows or was anything before the original album. I do this long entrance up the, the spiral road of Herodian, and I'm holding a lantern. And they had tried it with a, a votive candle in it there at first, but it just didn't read enough. So they rigged up a light bulb with a battery pack, and it was one of those, you know, you remember they had those big square batteries that were like about this tall? Well, they, you couldn't see it behind my cape, but they ran a cable from that down my arm, and, and they put a bulb into the lantern, and they had gels around it. Well, coming up, about the second take, trying to get the look of it, and the bulb started to get really hot, and it started to melt the gels, and they started to flame up. And so I tried to drop it, but I realized I couldn't drop it because I was wired from my arm, but the crew was right there, right behind me, and they were watching, they came up. You know, I, I didn't get burned or anything. And, and But that crew, you, you, you rely so much on your crew, and when you see these shots on location that the crew set up the camera just to capture us, like the overhead shot of Teddy on the cross. That's not an easy shot to set up. You have to build a platform. They used a, a big crane. And I learned all of these things this very first time. And 
I'm grateful for every part of it. Man. And we love Then We Are Decided, right? Yeah. We love Then We Are Decided. So we were backstage earlier before we came out here, and you, you whispered to me, you said, you know, Frank, I really don't want to answer any questions on, on stage today. Is, is, is something going on? Is, are you okay? Is... I'm okay, yes. yes, but I would like to do it as I felt when we were in Israel actually making the film. So you, you, you can answer questions about making the movie and stuff, but you don't want to do it right. You want to... You don't want to do it in your 2023 self. You want to do it in your 1973 self. Is that right? So is there? A, so do we have an AI version of you that's going to come out behind us? Or you said? No, what did you I, say? I learned how to move back in time. Time travel. Okay, Ted. I told you not to go to that smoke shop. <laughs> okay. So you you told me your buddy Rob that's over there. Uh, is going to help you with this. So why don't we stand up, if, we, if you can move this way. Or, Bob, you can stay there, it's okay. Come over here, uh, Ted. And uh, Rob, can you help Ted time travel? Is this uh, something we could do? I don't know what he's talking about. Let, let's kill the lights and see what happens. I don't know, folks. We're, we're, we're trying our best up here. Ted, you'll be okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> That's Norman Jewison, our director. None. No great problems. Uh, trying to get equipment up a mountain. Give us, give us a little volume, so Rob. We have to rely on mules and donkeys, as they did 2,000 years ago. And uh, the, the places I'm shooting and some of the locations we've chosen are, have proved uh, to be pretty inaccessible. But um, they're paying off, you know, uh, film-wise, cinematically. And uh, the heat has been a bit of a problem. Because, uh, you know, the kids are dancing, and as you know, it's a musical, and uh, we're working in temperatures. Anything in the desert without a full bar behind. Oh. 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 Hold on, how is Superstar going? Well, it's, uh, it's going very well. It's a little hot out here in the middle of the night here. And, uh, but the kids are holding up well, and uh, it's, uh, the mood is good. Everyone's working together well. Uh, there's no problem. Uh, it's the same caters I use on Fiddler in the Roof. Uh, they're a London group, and they feed up to 250 people a day. It really doesn't matter where they are. They're quite marvelous. They do all their own buying here, and, and so the food has been no problem. And how is the film itself coming up to your expectations? Yeah, I think so. Uh, whether any film is ever up to your expectations, yeah. I, I don't know, but... Uh, I'm very excited by it, very pleased by it, and uh, I hope when we cut it all together and uh, release it next June, it'll be something quite unusual. As you know, it's, it's not very often you get a chance to shoot an opera. This is a rock opera, there are no, there's no dialogue in it. And so, but I think it's going to make for a very unusual piece of film and uh, a very exciting form. You've got a mixed cast, both Israelis and Americans and some British, have you? So you can kind of get an example from there. Yeah. Must be very difficult for you on the cast uh, doing takes and retakes under this heat. And, uh, uh, are there any real problems other than that? No, not at all. As a matter of fact, we get so involved with the retakes that we forget all about the heat. You know, occasionally we get, to have, we get to take a break, you know, to, to have a little water or something. But uh, when we're working, we don't really notice it at all. You know? Sorry. Did that? <laughs> <laughs> Does it heat bother you, Ted? Not at all. I, well, I come from a kind of a desert area in Texas, so I'm kind of used to it, you know. Uh, besides which, when we're doing the scenes, we get so involved with what we're doing that uh, we don't have time to think about the heat. Really. How's the rest of the cast standing up? Oh, very, very well. Well, this what we've been doing today is probably the most uh, strenuous thing we have with the dancing. Um, but uh, they're doing phenomenally well, uh, surprisingly well, as a matter of fact, because we were afraid we might have some, a few heat strokes or something out here, you know. But everybody's doing quite well. Ted, what are your thoughts playing the role that you're playing in this particular place? Do you, do you think about it? Well, of course. It, it means uh, tremendously to the role. Uh, I mean, I think it could have been done in just about any other country, but I don't think it would have had the effect uh, on us as actors uh, for the story that we're doing. I know there's a, there seems to be a, a constant air of um, spirituality for me that uh, that 
it, it, it lends enormously to the role. Um, just looking out across the desert here and thinking in terms of we're doing something where something might have been done originally, it's quite amazing for me. You know, it helps tremendously. Have you and members of the cast taken time to uh, visit the religious shrines in Jerusalem? Yes, well, we spent the first uh, five, five or six weeks of it was of the production in Jerusalem, and we went, uh, each, each Shabbat we had, we went, and uh, the first couple of days that I was in Jerusalem, I spent most all the day in the old city, you know, just walking around and, and trying to familiarize myself with uh, where things supposedly actually happened, you know, and... Um, I've, I've been to En Gedi, I've been to uh, Qumran, where the Dead Sea Scrolls were found, of course, here the Dead Sea, and soon we'll be going up to Tiberius into the Sea of Galilee, so it's all uh, quite effective, quite beautiful. When you were filming, you know, words. Okay. Um, I'm going to do the first part, and then you, you finish it up. This is going to be short. Uh, this is uh, dur during this, the, the scene with the priests. Okay. And I say, one thing I'll say for him. Jesus is cool. All right. All right. All right. One thing I'll say for him. Jesus is cool. Perfect. All right. I guess. All right. What do you got? What do you got, Kurt? Um, if he's what they want, why take their toy away? He's afraid. There you go. You can talk that, Ted, right? You can Let's see what we do. How about when uh, we do the Hosanna Hayes? You know that? Well, whenever we make the entrance, you know, they're holding me on their shoulders and making me feel important and all that. <laughs> whenever I get a chance to sing, I say blah, 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 blah. The last part of my particular thing before they go back into the Hosanna is uh, I say, the rocks and stones themselves will start to sing. Hosanna, hey, Sana, 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 hey, Sana, Hosanna. Hey, JC, JC, what you fight for me? That's incredible. All right, you guys.